Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Ebody and X from The Candid Frame. Today I'm going to talk to you about anticipation and patience. Two things that I practice every time I go out and and photograph. And I think it'll be really helpful for you the next time you go out and, and make photographs. Um, but before we start with the pictures, I want to remind you that uh, my new book is coming out called Making Photographs, Developing a Personal Visual Workflow. It uh, really explores a lot of the principles that I share on this channel. They're, they're approaches that I've been practicing for years and that I teach in my in my personal workshops, and they've well all been encapsulated into this new book. Uh, so if you're looking for a book that's going to teach you how to make good photographs and do it consistently and have an understanding of how and why you can do it consistently, this is the book for you. And if you purchase it, make sure to go to the Rocky Nook website and use the promo code Pirello40. And that will give you 40% off the list price to, of the book. Uh, it's a great value, and I think the content um, is going to be incredibly helpful to a lot of you out there. So, so check it out. And if you like what you read in the book, uh, write a review in the Amazon store. Because even if you don't purchase the book directly from Amazon, um, that is a valuable resource to me with respect to marketing the book. So I would really appreciate if you do that. Now, one of the things I, I see when I look at some YouTube videos are street photographers or YouTubers slash street photographers who will mount a GoPro camera on top of their, their mirrorless camera, their DSLR, and they'll roam the streets taking pictures and you'll get to see through the GoPro how they made their various photographs. But unfortunately, I think a lot of these photographers end up making a lot of bad photographs. I mean, photographs that I, I think are, relative, rel are relatively uninspired because their the priority really is creating the video, not necessarily trying to make really great photographs on the street. It, it can be a really difficult thing and you know, I can spend two hours on, on the street and maybe come away with just one shot. So if I did mount a camera uh, on top of a, a GoPro, on top of my camera, and I spent two hours filming, there wouldn't be a lot happening for the great majority uh, of, that, of that recording time. Just because a lot of what I do has little to do with pressing the button. It's really more about seeing, analyzing a scene, breaking it down, and assessing how viable it is to make a, make a photograph. So for me, it's, it's really about, you know, seeing first, processing it, making judgments, considering it. And then once I do decide to make a photograph, I have to exercise a little bit of patience. Because what often happens for me is that I'll find a scene and, I, and I'll see that it has potential because of the light, because of the lines and shapes. And I'll go, oh, this is a good place to sort of settle down and start figuring out my composition. Figure out whether I want to go horizontal or vertical, whether I want to step back, get a little closer. Even before that particular special moment is sort of played out, I'm already examining the scene. And once I've done that, it's it's about practicing patience at that point and seeing how the movement of people, the changing light, the play of shadow, maybe even traffic changes and transforms that scene from moment to moment to moment. And if I've guessed right, something will happen and I'll be ready to make the photograph. And that's more often than not how I make the great majority of my photographs. Sometimes I'll see something and I'll react with really quick reflexes to make the shot. But I'm still considering all those elements that I normally think about when I have the leisure of time. Uh, it may be happening in a briefer duration of time. It may be happening in just seconds or even milliseconds. But I'm still making the same calculations. And... I want to, if you are the kind of photographer who likes just walking around and snapping pictures and you're, not, and you're disappointed with the results that you're getting, well, I want you to look at these three pictures and rethink your approach. 
uh, you may find that trying things a little differently may increase the likelihood that you come away with some great photographs. Okay, here we have a shot by Ye Min. This was created with a Fujifilm X-T2 at 1 500th of a second, F11, ISO 1600. Now, one of the things I've talked about in, in this YouTube channel is the idea of finding setting first. And we have a lot of great examples in our Flickr pool of photographers who find an interesting backdrop, let's say a colorful wall in which light and shadow is, is revealing texture and color. And then the photographer will just wait for a solitary, solitary figure to walk into the frame to help complete the shot. And this is really one of the easier ways of getting into this sort of sensibility and, and approach. You find a, a, a backdrop that's really interesting for any variety of different uh, reasons visually. And then you just wait for the human figure, maybe one figure, maybe two or three, to come into the frame and to play off of that setting. And the nice thing about finding setting first before the moment plays out is that you can be really careful with respect to how you can compose a photograph. Now, this shot by Ye Min follows that whole idea, but rather than just being a wall, it's this, you know, this basically this, this bay where all these uh, boats are um, docked or are moving through the water. So you have this scene and you have this colorful array of greens and reds and blues. You have the dark yellow brownish murkiness of the water. You have the horizon line in the distance. You have the, uh, the uh, tramp uh, not the tramp, the tram, or what is that? I don't know. Um, anyway, the, the, the place that people walk across, the crosswalk, I guess, uh, to get from land to get to the boat. So you have these really interesting elements that help provide a really nice sense of place. Now, you could just make a shot of that scene and just walk and keep walking, which is what a lot of people who are traveling often do. But Yamin does something different because he recognizes that probably, and I'm probably reading into his mind a little bit, but that the image needs a little something. And in this case, it's someone in the foreground. Now, from having made shots like this before, what's, what's happened for me is I'll see a scene like this, and I'll notice that as people walk in front of me, that the light that's falling on the scene in the background isn't falling in front of me. And that if I expose for the background area, anyone who moves in front of me is going to be silhouetted. So I'll purposely expose for, for the highlight. I may go to manual exposure mode, take a meter reading, and it really doesn't matter where I'm using matrix or center weighted or spot for, for a scene like this. I usually use matrix. And I may or may not underexpose slightly, um, maybe minus two thirds of a stop, maybe a full stop, if, if that. And then what I'll do is as people move past me, I will take a series of shots just to see exactly where I would need to frame someone in order to make the shot work. And a lot of those initial shots are bad shots, they're failures, but what I'm trying to gauge is placement. Where do I need to be in relationship to the subject who's gonna move across the frame to be able to get them in the spot I want them to and still retain all of that important information, detail in the background that I consider important. Um, you know, if Ye Men was able to do this with one shot, that would be remarkable. But, you know, for me, it's very rarely that I'm able to do that with just one, one photograph. I'm, you know, refining my vision and trying to figure out, you know, where do I want to place elements? And when you have someone walking right in front of the camera at a distance where you could literally touch them, they're moving across the frame really quickly relative to the objects that are further away. And so timing becomes absolutely critical. And that's one of the things that I'm doing as I test shots as people walk past me to sort of anticipate when I see them out of the corner of my eye and when I need to press the button in order to take the photograph. By composing the shot that he, that has he did in this way, he makes that person in the foreground a very strong graphic element. 
you know, especially the, it's a, it's a great that he has that hat because the shape of the the brim, the crown of the hat, his nose, his chin, his lips, the slope of his back really adds a nice graphic element to everything else that's in in this scene. And the fact that he is so dark, it's sort of like this deep shadow in the center of the frame, plays off the shapes and the colors of the elements in the background. It really is a wonderful shot. But again, it's about anticipating. You know, you read a scene and you anticipate that if you add something else, in this case, someone moving across the frame, then you can make something much more interesting interesting than what you found initially. And then it just becomes a matter of patience, of waiting it out, whether it's three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Some people measure the, the, uh, the quality of their street photography by how, how many miles they walked or how, how long they, how far they wandered, how many miles they, you know, they endlessly walked for that period of time. And for me, it's not so much about that. It's whether or not I came away with an interesting photograph that really challenged, challenged the way I see and the challenged the way that I photograph. For me, that's, that's the quality. And if I only walked one city block for the entire time, but I got that, then it was well worth my time. Okay, here we have a shot by Omri Shomer. This was created with a Panasonic LX100 at 1,000th of a second, F8 ISO 200. So here's another scene where it was about anticipation. I suspect that Omri saw this, uh, this scene with the stairs, um, with the beach and the water in, in the distance, but recognized that when people go up and down the stairs, that there was a potential for an interesting photograph, not just of, of one solitary figure going up and down the stairs with a surfboard, but multiple figures, which could create a, a pattern and a flow to the image, which he successfully creates here. I have a friend, uh, a photographer who contributes um, to this group here, who's one of my students, who created a, a similar shot. He just found a, a view that allowed him to look down on the stairs um, where surfers were climbing up and down in order to get to and from the beach. And he created a shot that was very, very similar to this. And Omri succeeds really well because the placement of each of these figures is essential, is essential to making this shot work as well as it does. I love the, the way this board leads from the right edge of the frame to this figure in the center, and then you have these two figures here walking away that cast these long shadows in, in the corner. There's a great flow to this image because your eye navigates here and here and then across the horizon line where these palm trees are and circles back. And it's great because you have that separation um, which with each of the boards in the frame. There is some intersection between this board and the human figure there, but it doesn't ruin the shot for me in the, in the least at all. It's the boards that really are the strong graphic element in the shot. And you also have the repetition in terms of the way the, the surfers are holding the boards because you can see the sort of arc and flow in the arm to the board here and here. And it's interesting that the two figures in the foreground, uh, you can see that the line here is created by their left hands. They're mirror mirroring each other. And then here it's the right hand that are mirroring, mirroring each other. It's really a nice little detail. And there's repetition throughout. It's not just these figures, but it's the palm trees. It's the bikes. It's the steps. It's the, the shadows. Um, there's a lot of pattern and shape in the shot. It's not just about light and shadow. I mean, the light and shadow here is really strong, but the heart of this image is, is line and shape. But getting back to this whole idea of anticipation and patience, because when you observe a scene like this and you see the potential for it to play out in a way, in something like this, then it's incumbent on you to stay put, to just stay there and observe as people move through the scene. And the great majority of people that walk down these steps are not going to provide you the shot that works. They're, they'll either be solitary and it really, as a singular subject, it doesn't really add to the frame. You could have multiple people, four or five different people, but because of how they are positioned relative to each other, they just become these graphic clumps and it becomes difficult to really 
clearly define each each figure in the in the scene. And then, of course, there's the issue of just timing, of being able to depress the button at the, just the right time so that each figure is in an ideal and proper place within the frame. And that just doesn't happen if all you do is come upon a scene and just take a shot. And I think that's the mistake that too many photographers who want to practice, practice street photography do, is that they're endlessly reacting and taking pictures but they're not making photographs. They're not carefully observing. They're reacting to maybe one element in the scene, say an interesting character or a play of you know, light and shadow, but they're not really observing. They're too much in a rush to get to the next scene that they think will provide them a better photograph. And scenes like this require awareness. They require you being able to anticipate the potential for a scene and the patience to linger long enough for it to play out. And I'll tell you that, you know, you can sometimes spend a long time at a location and it doesn't result in anything. I've spent 30, 40 minutes on a spot trying to make it work and it just doesn't, doesn't work. But I don't see that as a failure because it's that practice of lingering in a place that I've sensed potential in and being willing and willing to observe and make the photographs and not rush off somewhere else that increases the likelihood that when I next encounter a scene similar to that, I'll be ready. All right, here we have a shot by Bruce Joyle. Uh, this was created with a Panasonic uh, ZS200 at 1 400th of a second, F3.7, ISO 125. Now, this is a beautiful scene. Great light and shadow, wonderful color and shape. Um, especially love the shadow here from what I assume is a, is a bridge. That little kiss of red, um, what's more than a kiss of red, but it's this block of red here provides a nice color contrast to the more muted tones. Uh, the lines and shapes, especially these shadows here in the corner, this line that goes through here, the railing, the fence, this little block of of um, rectangular shapes here, these, you know, the, the triangles that repeat themselves throughout the frame. A great, a great scene. But what makes the shot interesting are the three figures that are walking through in this area of highlight. Now, this is a scene that Many photographers might come up on and they might see how all the things I've just pointed out in terms of the setting could produce an interesting photograph. Um, but it takes a little bit of patience to be able to recognize how the elements at the edges of the frame play an important role in the success of this shot. Because when I take a look at this frame, I can see that Bruce really paid attention to this frame. Because it's not just about this at the center of the frame, right? This wonderful triangle of red and this triangle here of, of aqua and green here, right? It's these shadows in the corner. It's this triangle of, of rectangles in the bottom of the frame. It's it's this shadow here, but it's also this wall in the background. There's an attention to the, the frame that's happening. And I, and I understand that this image was, was cropped um, because this is not uh, a standard you know, um, format. It's, but nevertheless, there was an awareness of the frame that to some extent happened during the creation of the image and then later on when the image was processed and, and cropped. But nevertheless... That kind of stuff does not happen by accident because it's far too easy to be fixated on one singular element in the frame and to compose the shot in such a way that cropping doesn't improve things. So having an awareness of the overall scene is really important so that later on, if you do choose to crop the shot, it doesn't result in it falling apart. It still works. And I really like this image because of that attention to detail. But then when you add to that is the anticipation, the recognition that as wonderful as this scene is, it could be a little better. It could be a little better if you included human figures in the frame. And this is where patience is really important because 
I don't know how heavily trafficked this area is, whether people run alongside this boardwalk and exercise all the time, or you know, whether the traffic, foot traffic is fairly sparse. Um, you could get a shot where you only have one figure in there to help serve as a counterpoint and provide a sense of scale. That's all well and good, but it's the fact that he has more than one figure in there. He has three figures who are really well-placed within this area of highlight. And because of the lighting, you get these shadows. So these people become more than just human figures in their frame. Their shadows become yet another graphic element in the shot. And if you notice the, the shape of the shadows, especially this one, it mirrors this triangle, this, this almost human-type shape in the frame is sort of mirrored in this shadow here and to some extent with the other, other shadows. And just having the three people here really makes the shot interesting. Whenever I come upon a scene and I sense its potential, I don't rush it. I don't just make one or two or three photographs and then move on. I'm always challenging myself and thinking, okay, how far can I take it? How much more can I add or take away from the shot in order to make it an effective composition? That's more than just documenting what's in front of me, but really making and shaping and composing a really good photograph. Anticipation and patience. Those two things are even more essential to me than the camera that I'm using because I could create a great photograph with a smartphone if I'm using those two things while I'm seeing. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you like what we're doing on this channel, you can find out more about us in The Candid Frame, which is a podcast in which I interview photographers every week about their work and career. And you can do that by going to thecandidframe.com. There you'll find uh, our blog entries. I write uh, an article a week in here. The, the latest one is uh, about the price of upgrading a camera. I recently uh, upgraded to an X100F after using an S version for about five years. And I talk about you know, why, why I hesitated upgrading um, that camera for as long as I did. But more importantly, I do interviews with photographers about their work and their career, about their, about their images and how they were, many of them were created. And uh, our most recent conversation was with Brian B. Plus Cross. He's a, he's a famed um, music photographer who is known primarily for his work documenting the hip hop scene in Los Angeles in the in the 90s and in, into the early 21st century. Really great photographer and a wonderful story to tell. So even if you're not into hip-hop music, the value of the conversation, uh, I think, is invaluable uh, just because of the wealth of knowledge and experience that he, that he shares on the interview. So check it out by going to thecandidframe.com. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.